Hello everyone, Wheels here. If you're watching this, it's because you want to hear some neat tidbits from what I heard from Lauren Faust herself as I worked on her security detail at the last BronyCon. Again, because I was her escort, I had no place to record my time with her, so everything I'm about to tell you is from word of mouth. Most of this I heard from Lauren in an impromptu hour-long conversation me and two other security guys had with her while she was in the green room, otherwise known as the VIP room, which was right next to our dispatch office. Some of this conversation was recorded and might be in a documentary if you don't believe me. But anyways, let's get right into it. Uh, I'll try and give some order to these. So we'll start with world building. So believe it or not, uh, Canterlot was literally intended to be a Gondor for little girls. Uh, no joke, that's actually the direct inspiration Lauren told us. That <laughs> she was just straight out of uh, Lord of the Rings right there. Uh, Celestia and Luna's parents, or otherwise the king and queen to the princess uh, dynamic, uh, Lauren said that she simply never was able to get to that in an episode yet. Uh, in other words, she probably was going to do it maybe eventually, but when you only have one season, a pilot season no less, it's hard to have all your ideas realized, I guess. Uh, as for the other parents with the main six and their characters, she just never got to it yet. That's why we only know of, you know, like Twilights and Rarities so far. Uh, more main six inspirations. Uh, Twilight, as Lauren mentioned in one of her other Q&As at the convention, was actually inspired by her mother, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, Fluttershy was actually inspired by Lauren's childhood. Not the entire childhood, but she just she portrayed Fluttershy to represent certain moments she remembers from her childhood where she she was a little shy, I guess she said. Um, so it's Fluttershy is kind of like, some, it's like a part of her childhood. Uh, Dash, as we all know, due to copyright issues, is basically Firefly in just a different body. Firefly, as we know, is uh, Lauren's favorite character from G1. Pinkie Pie was not and is not intended to be that random character uh, you see in other cartoons. Uh, she is not Cheese from Foster's Home or Fred Fredberger from Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Pinkie, as described by Lauren, was intended to be a free spirit. She sees the world in a different way, and her antics are simply that vision as presented to the audience. And Free Spirit is apparently allowed to break the fourth wall. <laughs> um, on For Rarity, I personally asked how she landed on Tabitha as a uh, voice uh, actress for her. And Lauren simply said that when they auditioned everyone, as soon as she came up, she's like, that's our Rarity right there. Um, apparently Rarity was supposed to have a more stereotypical English accent, but that evolved over time to what it is now. Uh, this was a personal question I got to ask uh, in regards to Scootaloo. I asked if there were any plans while she was working on the show for more Scootaloo featured and focused episodes, considering there were already like two handfuls devoted to Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle. The answer was, yeah, she did. She had about three episodes in mind, um, most likely probably spread across the two seasons she was working on. The main idea of, a Scoodle of her Scootaloo episodes revolved around how Scoots was technically a handicap, for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's right. Lauren said that she designed Scootaloo to never be able to fly. She didn't never wanted her to fly. The stories of Scootaloo would entail a conflict between her dreams and aspirations to be just like her idol, Rainbow Dash, and wanting what she could not get. In the end, Scoots would have to discover herself and that there was a difference between what you wanted and what you were actually good at, and your true destiny. In this case, the scooter. And so Lauren said that if she ever did decide to give Scootaloo her cutie mark, it would be a scooter-related symbol. Personally, I love this idea, and it's a fairly mature message, but that's also probably why it was never used yet. Or maybe not, it might be something else we don't know about. We might see a Scootaloo episode this season, hopefully. I don't know. But uh, Lauren said her Scootaloo episode ideas would have would be one that would focus on her discovering her strengths and sticking up for herself with the bullies at school who would pick on her because she couldn't fly. This sort of sounds like that Fluttershy moment at the flight camp, actually, later in from the later part of season one. Uh, Derpy. Okay, here's a big one. So before Derpy was acknowledged, Lauren already had this idea for a background character who would be this clumsy troublemaker. Uh, it was kind of like Lauren's Derpy character, and she named her Ditsy Do. Yeah. Uh, however, don't get these two confused. Uh, she said that they are not one and the same. What she said was that if Derpy was not discovered, Lauren would have made Ditsy anyways. But when she heard of Derpy, she ran with that character instead. Winter wrap up and feeling Pinky Keen support this episode eleven. Winter wrap up had Ditsy do in it. This is before they uh, the the team accepted Derpy as a you know little fan character they'll throw in. So like four episodes later, 
uh, Derby was realized as a character in Vink and Keen with that whole anvil gag. So just to be clear, Lauren confirmed that Ditsy and Derpy are not the same character. One was just Lauren's idea for an accident prone background character, and the other, Derpy, was the fan created one that she liked more and decided to run with. In terms of building her as a character, Lauren said she just wanted Derpy to be a gag side character who is sometimes the cause of little problems. She never really intended to give her a voice either. So like the anvil gag is the perfect example of what Derpy would mostly be involved with. Uh, the changeling army and enemy. So Lauren came up with the concept of the Changeling as, a, as the enemy of Equestria, but she did not draw or visualize them. She wasn't on that. She just came up with the idea and concept. So, so she just wrote up, yeah. Uh, she borrowed from some mythology I actually have never even heard of, despite I, me having an entire class on it in ninth grade. Uh, <laughs> apparently, a Changeling is a non-human child that has been left in the place of a stolen human child. The old superstition is that the young children could be abducted by fairies before they were baptized, and in those days... Children were watched carefully until that ceremony was over. So the purpose of which was that the creature would feed off the love they were given from the parents who were unaware of the imposter. Obviously, we all know how that was used in season, the season two finale. Uh, an unaired episode. So Lauren had this idea, which was never greenlit, aired, or something. I don't know. She didn't really say. It's just an idea she had that never came to fruition. The episode would follow Dash and AJ taking some adventure or ending up in Whitetail Wood, which was the running of the Leaves territory. During their travels, they would come across a deer family and a pony living among them. That pony would have had branches tied to his head because apparently he was abandoned when he was younger or something and was raised by the deer. Kind of like a Raised by Wolves parody. Whether or not the deer were sentient, Laurent didn't say, but obviously the pony was. Uh, the conflict here would be that Dash would want to tell the pony that he was in fact a pony and living a lie, while AJ would fight her with the opposite, that it wasn't their place to ruin what he knew about himself. Lauren didn't discuss what happened in the end of this. It was just a concept that just wasn't used, so she couldn't really get to that point. So, fan fictions? Maybe? I don't know. Knowing you guys, you probably will. Um, some more neat little facts. Apparently, Craig, Lauren's husband, Jenny Taratovsky, and Rob Renzetti were all roommates in college. That's pretty coincidental and awesome. <laughs> Uh, I did not, nor did any of us, ask why Lauren decided to leave the Friendship is Magic development team, for we didn't think it was really our business, and it really isn't. It's interesting, though, because Friendship is Magic was her first show where she was the executive producer. It was on a subject which she loved, and it became a huge success. What she worked on since then with the Galaxy Girls and Super Best Friends Forever is already impressive, especially Super Best Friends Forever, which I love. Just wish it was longer than, you know, a minute, an episode. Anyways, she's working on a new show with her husband, Craig, and it's called Wander Over Yonder. It's going to be on Disney. Uh, look out for that when it comes out eventually. Um, one thing we did uh, that she did mention was her surprise of how, over how Friendship is Magic has ended up where it has, where in, compared to Powerpuff, another girl-themed show which had a large male adult audience. During our conversation, Lauren and us all agreed that it's probably the difference in popularity is mostly due to the advent of the internet. The internet wasn't as big or accessible during Powerpuff, and here it was, so it was much easier to communicate a, a interest in a show. And so a fan base, in this case, could evolve. But it's, it still leads to an interesting concept. Would it have mattered if Lauren worked on a different show of equal quality? would it still be as big as it is? So the idea is, it might be a good subject for our video, like I said, why ponies? Sure, we like the show for its very reasons, but why did it come to what it's become? Does it matter that it was MLP, or could the setting have been something entirely different? I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, I'll leave that for another video, I think. Uh, like, comment, subscribe? Uh, if you want, maybe, I don't know. Uh, until next time, I'm Wheels, take it easy.